Hey guys, at first I want to say thank you for all those views and comments on my previous video on the free lines principle. Yeah, this video was a success. I waited to make this video for a long time, yeah. But now it's a really successful video and there have been a lot of comments and some people don't get the point of the video. The video was to show the idea behind the free lines principle, not to give an exact impression on what you need. It was an impression of what I bring for some specific kind of mission. Yeah, it's not about airsoft. I don't care if you use it for airsoft or if you use it for real military stuff or for law enforcement or for fun or for a fetish or if you don't use it at all. I don't care about this. Just watch it. If you like it, that's okay. If you don't like it, that's also okay. If you post comments, please stay technical, give good critic and don't just post shit like all those haters do. Uh, yeah, thank you for tuning in. In this video, uh, yeah, it, it provides additional information to the free lines principle. And I want to answer some questions and some things that were unclear in the comments. And I want to talk about the IFAC and survival kit thing, because a lot of people didn't get the information that it's not all the same. I don't wear four uh, exactly same IFACs or first aid kits or survival kits. So stay tuned and watch this video. Okay, first point overall understanding of this video. Yeah, this stuff all depends on the mission. It's not an exact kit list of what everyone needs. Some of the stuff can stay at home if you want and some other stuff maybe can be practical for you. If you don't like it, don't bring it. It's up to you. So that's the idea behind the video to show the layers or the lines. And I think that's quite obviously got shown so everyone gets the impression. Second point, ballistic protection. Yeah, ballistic protection is not shown in my free lines video. If you need ballistic protection, of course, you will have to bring it. But on long recon missions or even on some other missions, sometimes you don't need ballistic protection because you want to stay relatively light or there is not a risk that you need it. And sometimes the advantage of being fast and light is better than having ballistic protection and bring a helmet and plates. So yeah, it all depends. If you need ballistic protection, that's okay, bring it. If you don't need, don't bring it. Of course, for recon stuff, you can also add ballistic protection quite easy. Just wear a plate carrier underneath the jacket, chest trick on top, and here you go, ballistic protection. If you want a helmet, just wear a helmet. Make sure it's camouflaged and you're ready to go. So that's simple. Okay, now the next point. Yes, I bring a knife. I forgot to mention my knife. Of course, if you wear a plate carrier, consider not wearing a neck knife underneath the plate carrier because it can make more damage than having the knife somewhere else. But yeah, I bring a neck knife. Why? Because I like the idea of a neck knife. I wear this even more often than my underwear. And yeah, I have it on me all the time, even if I undressed, even if I go for a shower or into water or whatever, I have this knife with me because this knife is essential. And that's why I forgot to mention it in the video. Yeah, that's not a big problem or not a big deal, I think. So that's okay for me. In most cases, I don't bring a multi-tool. Why? A multi-tool is cool because you have a file, maybe a saw, but I bring a saw, extra saw, uh, and you have something to cut wire. That's quite cool. Um, yeah, sometimes I bring a multi-tool, sometimes I don't. If you want to bring one, that's okay. If I don't bring one, that's my problem. But maybe someone else in the team has got something to cut a wire. So, for, uh, in my opinion, a multi-tool is not essential. Okay, now let's undress. And then we're going to talk about the survival and IFEC and first aid stuff. Let's go. Okay, at first, ballistic protection, if you need it, I'll place it right here. Daypack is a Berghaus Munro 2, so it's infrared safe. And the smock is a smock. Smock is a jacket with a lot of pockets. It's by UF Pro, I will link it down in the description. 
I will also try to link almost all stuff I had in the free lines principle video in the description of the free lines principle video. So if you already watch it, go back and check out. Maybe there is the list and you will find what you wanted to know. Okay, at first let's talk about those headlamps. I brought four lamps in the video and some guys of you complained about it. So yeah, if you don't want to bring four lights or if you only want to bring one light or even no light, that's okay for me. If you have night vision device, you may can, you can operate a different way, but this setup right now is not for night vision. So I bring four lights or four flashlights, two headlamps, uh, one of them on the rifle, I don't have it with me right now, and one other flashlight in my pants. The idea behind this is on the rifle I can shoot and do combat with the light and it even has got an infrared function. So even if I'm wearing night vision, I'm working with the light on the rifle because then if it's dark in the room or in the tunnel, I can walk with the infrared light on the weapon and can switch it on for a short period of time. This is quite cool. And now when I jump to the pistol, the pistol doesn't have any light on it. Um, yeah, first is in Germany, it's not legal to own the lights that are especially made for mounting them to weapons, only for active law enforcement and military and only for in duty. So I cannot add light to my pistol. And this is where I need a second light because I cannot uh, unmount the light from my rifle really fast, but I can get out this flashlight and then I can work with the pistol and this flashlight and use it uh, however I want it with this or like this. And for me, that's the main reason why I bring this. I haven't mentioned this in the three lines video, but yeah, that's one idea and I can even point if I really need to make me visual. Okay, these are already two lamps or two flashlights. Yeah, isn't that enough? Uh, for me personally, no. If I'm walking on the rope or on steep terrain, I want to find a route, uh, maybe I do some basic climbing with combat gear, I want to use a headlamp. A headlamp is mounted on the head. So I have my hands free for walking with the rope or for climbing or doing some stuff and I can use the headlamp. But one is none and two is one. I hate this sentence, but in this case it makes sense. This headlamp can fail. Okay, when the battery is empty, I have spare batteries with me, I can just change them, that's quite easy. But it can fail when it's damaged or I lose it, it's gone. And then walking around or building a rappel anchor or climbing anchor or rappelling with this in my hand or in my mouth? No, I'm carrying this really, really lightweight headlamp by Petzl. It has got white light and also red light. So yeah, this is so light. I'm not sure what its actual weight is, but I will write it somewhere here. And for me personally, this gives so much more safety. So for me, it's totally worth it. If you don't want to carry an extra headlamp, that's okay for me. But the reason why I do this is, um, yeah, I once did a march with comrades and then in the forest, suddenly the switch of my headlamp, of my trusty headlamp I was using for four or five years already, suddenly broke. So this was not working anymore. And then I was walking around with no headlight. And that's not it. If it's dark, you're in the thick forest and you want to move through branches, uh, and this, and you want to be able to see something, you need light. So luckily the comrade, which uh, I was walking around with, had got this lamp, or the older model of this one, and he gave it to me, and then I was walking around with this lamp, and this was the moment I noticed one is none, two are one. Okay, now why not using only headlamps and no lamp or no flashlight on the rifle? Yeah, on the rifle, you need it, it needs to be mounted on the rifle, so you can push 
and switch it on and off quite easy. On the head, you will light the rifle. It will be so much easier for the enemy to see you if you're using a headlamp, which lights your rifle and it's just not, not that bright and it's not that easy to switch it on and off. It's just easier on the rifle. So I at least need to wear or carry around three lights for my personal preference. Yeah, and then for the pistol, the Ford one. But sure, that's not how everyone has got to do it, but that's how I do it. Okay, that's it with the lights. Now, the next one. I think that's the most interesting one. So I have to get you a bit closer and then I want to show you the survival and IFAC idea in close. Okay, at first I want to talk about the IFAC I usually have on my chest trick. Okay, at first this is the IFAC of my chest trick. Everyone in the military has got something like this. Maybe an individual one or an already packed one, but what's all the same, it's easy to see, it's easy to get, and it's for carrying about shot wounds or explosion wounds, things which has to be done really quick. So at least one tourniquet, it's to stop bleeding. Scissors are optional to cut open clothing because when you get shot, it's possible that the hole in the pants is somewhere else than it is in the leg because the fabric of the clothing can slide around and that's why you may have to consider cut it open. I already showed it in the freelance video, but I want to talk about it a bit more right now. Yeah, I also have got some disinfection here, but only because I really like the alcohol pads. It's not essential for IFAC. Quick lot. Now a bandage. Yeah, sure, a Israeli bandage would be even better. And gloves to protect me from blood. But usually all comrades are checked by a doctor and you know they don't have any dangerous infection things they could give you. And when the shit hits the fan, usually don't really use them sometimes, but gloves are essential because maybe your hands are dirty and you have to do something more, then you need gloves. And of course, two emergency blankets. Yes, I'm sure you already noticed on the Freelance Principle video, I really like emergency blankets because they are multi-use. People often forget emergency blankets and yeah, they are really important because they protect your comrade from the wind, from the cold, maybe even from the heat and from dirt. You can do a lot of stuff with them. Okay, yeah, the IFAC. So this is for fast carrying, like carrying under fire or tactical field care maybe. But sure, this is no replacement for a real medic like Medic Bravo or Charlie. But everyone in the military knows this. I'm also sure those people who are commenting normally should know that this is the IFAC and what the IFAC is for. The next one is the one I have got in my pants. That's this one. Today there was a comment, someone said the boo-boo kit or the boo-boo uh, first aid stuff. Oh, I have to get rid of this stuff word. Yeah, and I think that's really it, boo-boo. <laughs> So it has, has got some normal things to tape your finger. Uh, something for blisters on the feet. A scissors to cut uh, something that rips or a nail. Uh, oh my God, I don't know the word. Something to pull out ticks or sh small splinters from your skin. Again, gloves, a small knife, a bigger bandage to cover bigger wounds if there is a big scratch or a burn or something. Inside here is also a nine liner, so it's always in the first line. And usually I also have got a nine liner in my arm pocket. But if I forget this, or if it's already used, or I lose it, or whatever, or I don't bring my smock, or I use a different kind of kit because I have different loadouts and different kits, and I don't want to pack small things like the nine liner uh, every time I pack my bag. So it's doubled sometimes. Then some tape. I prefer this over the ready ones. The ready ones, uh, 
are cool because everyone knows them, but this is so simple, simple to use and multi-use because you can repair some kit with it or yeah, you can secure your fingernail when it <laughs> rips or whatever. And then some basic medicine. Yeah, basic medicine, that means something if your shit is liquid <laughs> to help you. It even has got some ibuprofen, so something against headache or small pain. And yeah, that's basically it. So that's like the one in the comments said, bubu kit. Yeah, this is for not really serious injuries, but really practical to keep you moving, to give you a bit more comfort when being around in nature. So this is even practical for everyone, not only for military. And inside the day pack, of course, again, I have got the Sam splint. Yeah. Okay, that's basically it with the first eight kits. So you see, those are not the same. First aid kit, like the Boo Boo kit and the IFAC. Okay, now to the survival kit. In my video, some people thought I have got three survival kits. Or yes, I said one of them, the red one in my big backpack, is the survival and first aid kit. The reason for the red one is it's in my big backpack. I even bring it when I'm on mountain trips and so there is some stuff inside or some things inside which are additional additional even to this stuff because there is some extra cord inside there is a file for my crampons or for a knife to sharpen it or for an ice tool to sharpen it there is some extra tape inside there when i'm in the mountains are some pain medicine inside but yeah again only ibuprofen and paracetamol and again, an emergency blanket. Yeah, emergency blankets, I have like three or four, or even five with me, but we can do a lot of stuff with them or a lot of things with them. And they are so useful even when making a shelter, one is even none. And if it rips or if you use it for one night, maybe you cannot use it again because it rips and then it's gone. So I bring four of them and yeah, you can even make a tourniquet with them. You can carry a combat with them. You can do so much stuff. Just Google it. I think you will be able to find something about it, what you can do with an emergency blanket. Now, good emergency food or survival food are nuts because they have a lot of calories, fat, protein. Really good. Nuts are good. To heat things up, it can be cool to have an MRE heater. This is one from the Polish MRE, I think. I think it, yeah, I think it was Polish. Or an Aspit cooker, it's from the French MRE. So he's got a small Aspit thing which you can burn. But what I think is even more cool is th stuff like this. This is a wool crane fruit muesli. You only have to pour water inside and you can eat it and it, the water can even be cold. And this can fit inside a day pack, inside a smog, inside almost everything. Yeah, this is a BV bag for emergency. Yeah, it's not breathable, but cool. It's also some survival stuff. A water filter. I'm using this B3 by Cutterdyne. It's a one liter flexible bottle with a filter element here. And I can just fill this up in the stream, screw this on, and I can drink right out of it. The weight of it is really light. It's also quite compact when there's no water inside. I even prefer this over those soya or life straws because this is so easy to fill. You fill it up and can drink right out of it. And this is not possible with those other things. And there you have a float volume of two liters per minute. So you can drink almost like normal and this is why I really like this. Okay, yeah, a flare. Of course, again, I want to say it again, so even if you just click through the video and skip it, 
you don't need all this stuff. This is only what I bring. This is only to give you an impression. And no one needs to carry what I'm carrying. Okay, now finally. These are my survival kits. Why two of them? The main reason is I don't always wear the smock. When I'm wearing a different loadout with a combat shirt, I will only bring this small survival kit because usually then this is enough. I'm not in the forest. I'm not walking around for a long time. I'm moving with a vehicle or only for a short period of time with ballistic protection and so on. So then I only bring the small one. And if I'm wearing smog, walking around for a long time and I want to be able to do survival for a longer time, I'm using the bigger one. Okay, at first, let me show you the content of the smaller one. At first, again, yeah, I don't care what you're saying, but I love survival or emergency blankets. And yes, even if I only bring this small survival kit, I even have got this emergency blanket. It can protect me from rain. I can build a shelter. Yeah, I notice I'm repeating myself, but comments prove that it's needed to repeat myself sometimes. Then some cord. Yeah, you can see it's really thin cord and three pieces. I don't want to have one long piece, which I have to cut. Sometimes it's faster to have smaller ones. And if I need them longer or I can make a knot, I make them longer. Sometimes I bring a bit power cord, but in most cases or usually I don't bring power cord because in my opinion, power cord is quite heavy and I prefer those thin ones and you can repair stuff with them. You can build a shelter and in most cases that's enough. If I know I want to have something stronger, I use more of them, but those micro cords are strong enough for most things. A small button compass on elastic band so I can simply slide over my arm and then I can navigate or do some basic navigation with this button compass. Condoms, three of them. Why condoms? Sure, if you get bored and you hang around with comrades. No, just kidding. It's for collecting water. You just need a sock. So take one of your old socks or just undress, take a sock, put a condom inside, fill it with water, make a knot in the condom, and then you have something to carry water. And this can be essential. Of course, I've got a flask on the water filter and I've got something to carry water in my backpack but when all things go wrong I leave my um, day pack maybe the flask gets damaged or I lose it or whatever I have those lightweight condoms maybe one could be enough and socks and then I can carry water something to light fire so it makes hot sparks quite simple and I choose the small one because it's lighter more compact even with this metal thing because I don't want to use my knife for this sometimes then use it like that yeah so this kit is ready to go without having to need something else now oh a fourth condom okay maybe four are too much but yeah you never know then tampons. Usually they are, they are packed, but I want to demonstrate. Not one, I need two of them because sometimes you place your tinder and then when you place the tinder, there comes some rain or some water, then the tinder is wet and then you are not able to use it again. And maybe you want to do fire or make fire a second time or a third time. So you need more than only one tampon. And you will see it's so easy to make fire with this. You just need some sparks and it burns. Even easier using a lighter. On the lighter, oh, where is the camera? On the lighter, I have got some tape. It's not a lot. Maybe you should add some more. I already used it. And yeah, there's some strong duct tape. It's really practical for almost everything. So yeah, duct tape. So that's basically the small set. Yeah, I will leave one condom out because four are maybe too much. Pack it again. 
And I think now you already noticed it's not all the same. Of course, the emergency blanket is repeatingly and I have a lot of them, but they are lightweight and multi-use, just to tell you again. Okay, now let's get to the bigger survival kit. The bigger survival kit is in a steel can. So I can use it to cook water or to heat water or for cooking. Yes, on site here I've got land to air signals. At first with the flashlight SOS. Yeah, I don't uh, use air signals or land to air signals that often or light signals that often. So I wrote it down and all well when everything is well. And double L. So yeah, just, just for me, maybe you don't leave this. That's okay. I placed some rubber inside here. Uh, first for sealing this can and second rubber burns quite good and it makes dark smoke. Yeah, it's not good for environment, not good for nature, but I don't use this on a regular basis or on a daily basis. I only will use this in emergency to make me visible when there's snow and I need dark smoke or to make fire when it's, yeah, when it's cold and I, I need to get warm. Then water disinfection. It's a micropore from the Catagen group. Alcohol wipes. It's for disinfecting small wounds or for light fire. Yeah, maybe that's too much for you. I like to carry some of them because I use them relatively often. And yeah, when you have to do some small, I don't want to call it surgeries, but if you have like a tick or a small wound, you use them and need them. And even for blisters, it can, it can be good. So have something to disinfect your fingers or the wound. Then inside here, a light stick, infrared, yeah. Again, a lighter. I have got at least two lighters, you can see. One lighter can be enough, but it's not that heavy. Sure, it adds up over time, or if you have like more and more and more lighters. So I could even leave this out. I have to be honest, I packed this survival kit, I'm not sure, four years ago. So um, yeah, right now I'm not that sh sure what I thought when I packed all of it and I think that's the reason why I have one more lighter here because I even have got a lighter on my stove so yeah right now I'm carrying around three or four lighters and that's yeah maybe that's too much so I could dump this out that would be totally okay yeah because I also have got the fire starter so I don't really need the lighter I guess okay then oh Traubenzucker. It's the sugar that gets into the blood really fast. If you get exhausted and you get weak, this can be good. It gives you a short push and then there comes a down. But if you have this, it can help you. More tampons, because if you want to make fire repeatedly, you need more than only one tampon. This is like a women's sock. I can use this to pre-filter water. So I can put this over my flask or somewhere else and I can pre-filter water when the water is really dirty. I can use this as a pre-filter or even can use this in combination with the condom to carry around water. Yeah, the can, as I already told, can be used with fire to cook something or to heat up water. Okay, now here I have got this back. Yeah, it protects the content from water. This can is already quite good sealed, but I can also burn this. This plastic burns quite good. Sure, I will not do this on a daily basis. It's not good for the environment, but in survival, you don't really care about the environment that much. Sewing kit, yeah, needles, yarn, of course, sure. You also need some fabric because you cannot really stuff holes if you have no fabric and yes maybe that's a relatively heavy sewing kit but i already was in a situation that i really needed it i needed to sew my pants because it ripped from the knee to the butt all the way up so i needed to sew it and to place some extra fabric inside so sewing kit is really good 
Okay, a candle for a candlelight dinner on the run or for making fire. You see, making fire for me is really important because when you get wet and it gets really dirty and cold, you need fire. Of course, fire can get you detect detected, but there are some techniques you can use to hide a fire and to make fire without getting detected. Of course, I also don't do fire on a daily basis. If I don't need to do fire, I don't do it because it's smoky, it takes a lot of time, a lot of effort, and a stove with multi-fuel or with gas is much more practical. Okay, here are matches. Those are storm matches, so even when there is hard wind or strong wind, they will light up. Yeah, I think now when I'm overthinking this survival kit, I would dump this out. But I, for this video, I want it to be true. So I decided to leave all the stuff inside and show you what is inside. But yeah, I would dump the fourth condom of the first kit, maybe lighter and also those matches. Yeah. Okay, what do we have here? More tampon and opened tampon with wax because it burns really good. Yes, I have the candle, but here even more to make fire. Sure, when you are out in good weather and you want to make fire, it's really easy. You collect some wood and you use one tampon and do a big fire. But when it's raining for days and you're walking around a completely soaking wet forest, it can take hours to make a big fire and you will need this stuff. I will tell you this because I have got the experience for myself and I don't want to be in this situation again to be open or to be awake half the night to make fire and don't find any dry wood and get running out of tinder. So I bring a lot of tinder, yeah. Now, inside here, some additional cord. Cord is so important for building a shelter or repairing stuff, but mainly for building a shelter. I'm not sure if it's strong enough for building traps, but for building a shelter, you need cordage. Again, micro cord. Here, a razor blade packed in a way that it doesn't cut. Yeah, razor blade can be good for small surgeries, but yeah, not sure what I will use, would use them right now. I once have seen them in the survival kit, that's what, that's the reason why I packed them. Right now I cannot tell you what was my idea behind bringing these, but yeah, it's possible to bring them. Then, something hot to drink with vitamin C and magnesium, sugar, it's also good for wounds maybe, a cleaning wipe, uh, toilet paper, aluminium foil, good for cooking fish or you can build something out of it to cook something or for reflection, but I could also use this for reflection maybe. Then a wire saw, yeah, not sure, maybe they will, it will come in handy, maybe not, but yes, I packed it in this set and I will leave it in there because there will be the day where you maybe have to use it. And yeah, this is also made from magnesium. It was in the kit to test it out, but I will also dump this, put this away. And yeah, now this kit is again a bit lighter. And that's basically it. So you can see some things were just inside to test it out, to try it, to see if it works for me or if I need it. But now, after years rechecking it, I see I don't need all this stuff. So it gets a bit lighter. Now just let, let me pack this back. Of course, a fishing kit can also be an idea, but I'm not into fishing and I decided not to put one inside here. That's it. Tell me in the comments, do you have only one survival set? Only one first aid kit? Or 
when you're on tour you only have one at home you have several or do you pack them every time you get out depending on what you need or how do you do it that's what interests me and again i want to say this is not one universal thing that everyone can use for everything that's just my impression to give you some information and that's why i do those videos to just give an impression and to help people that are interested that they want to watch videos just pick out what you want what you need and don't do the other stuff what you don't think is practical so that's what it's about okay so thank you for watching and see you next time bye don't forget to subscribe subscribe and feel free to click the bell if you want to get notifications when i upload something so i think that's it and now i'll go home and we'll cut this video <laughs> okay bye <laughs>